हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna, welcoming all of you for Chaitanya Charitamrita session, and let's begin the session with auspicious recitation of Mangala Charan. Om Agya Timira Dasya Jnana Anjana Shala Kaya Chakshuram Militam Jena Tasmay Shri Guru Veena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stabitam Yena Bhutale. स्वयं स्वयंपाकदाम ददाति स्वादातिक वंदेहम श्रीगुरोतापदकम श्रीगुरोन्वैष्णवांशीपम सागर जाता सगरा तम सजीव साधवैतम सावधूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपी का कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्पतरु कृपा सिंधु वै वचा पतिदानेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवा सादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे नम ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाशातिदेशिणे मुखम करोति वाचा पंगु लंगयते गिरी यत्तम हम वंदे श्री गुरो दीनतारण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंदा ऑल ग्लोरी टू लॉर्ड चैतन्य ऑल ग्लोरी टू लॉर्ड नित्यानंद ऑल ग्लोरी टू अद्वैत आचार्य अद्वैत चंद्र एंड ऑल ग्लोरी टू ऑल द रिवोडी ऑफ लॉर्ड चैतन्य हरि बोल Hey, hey. So we were on chapter six, Madhya Lila, the liberation of Sarva Bhama Bhatta Charya. We have already covered three sections, and we were in the last, in the fourth section from verse number one hundred eighteen to two hundred fifteen, which talks about Lord Chaitanya converts Sarva Bhama into a Vaishnava. So we have already discussed that how Sarva Bhama Bhatta Charya and Gopina Tacharya were having this discussion, and Sarva Bhama raised very valid points as in. How to trust Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the supreme Lord, or rather, why to trust? Gopinath Acharya and Mukund Datta were not very happy with that conversation. They went and they informed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not see any flaw of Sarva Bhama Bhatta Acharya. On the contrary, he was actually telling that Sarva Bhama has such amazing affection for me, parental love for me, and he was trying to reciprocate accordingly. So when finally both of them meet and the discussion starts, and Sarva Bhama Bhatta Charya was trying to teach Vedanta Sutra to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he knows that for a sannyasi it is very very important to study Vedanta Sutras. So he was trying to teach him, and he was teaching him according to Sri Pad Shankara Charya's philosophy, and he was continuously 
he went on for seven days and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was listening with rapt attention without asking any question and without giving any affirmation as in he is agreeing or he is understanding the concept. So in the last session we discussed that Sarva Bhama finally asks Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that are you following what I am saying? Why you are not responding to it? What is, I mean, is there something wrong? Are you understanding? Are you agreeing? Or what is it? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells that I understand all the Vedanta Sutras for the purport, the commentary what you are giving it is difficult to understand or comprehend because you are giving an indirect meaning. So this conversation had just begun and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, we will see how he will be proving that what are the flaws in that philosophy. So let us begin this section. We were on verse number 140. So in this section also we will see that how Sarvabhama Bhattacharya is converted into a devotee of the Lord. So he was a Vedantist <clears throat> following the uh, teachings of uh, Shankara. Uh, so he was a Mayavadi an impersonalist, but Lord Chaitanya actually uh, convinces him scholarly, in a scholarly way, by presenting very valid arguments and logic and quoting from scriptures that uh, the Shankaracharya's interpretation of Vedanta Sutra are, is incorrect and that's how Sarvabhama Bhattacharya finally accepts uh, the personal form of the Lord as the highest and greatest representation of uh, the Supreme and that's how it becomes a Vaishnava or a devotee of the Lord. So that, that's how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestows the highest mercy on Sarvama Bhattacharya. Actually, the Supreme Absolute Truth is a person. The Supreme Personality of Godhead full of, with all opulences, you are trying to explain him as impersonal and formless. So in this particular subsection, the characteristics of absolute truth are being discussed and described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he is saying that actually the absolute truth, the supreme absolute truth is not impersonal but is a person with full of different opulences but you, in your interpretation of Vedanta Sutra, you are explaining the Supreme Person with unlimited opulences as without uh, form, uh, that he is not a person. So this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining. <clears throat> so actually, uh, the word Brahman uh, is can be is mis or can is partially understood by the impersonalist to represent the impersonal Brahman or or the Brahma Jyoti. The effulgence of the Lord. The impersonalists negate the complete understanding of the word Brahman, which includes the supreme form of the Lord. So, here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining that the uh, Lord is actually eternally a person and eternally supreme. And very interestingly, uh, the word Brahman is actually used by Arjuna when he completely accepts Krishna as supreme Lord. He says, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma. So he tells that that actually you are the supreme or the Param Brahman. Wherever there is an impersonal description in the Vedas, the Vedas mean to establish that everything belonging to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is transcendental and free of mundane characteristics. So now here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining that wherever the description comes, where it is mentioned, Nirvishesh word is used for Supreme Lord. So it does not mean that the Lord has no uh, characteristics or no qualities. Or no that, form. Or no form. So it is not that the Lord has anything less or the Lord does not have something. Because for a supreme to be supreme must possess everything. So how can supreme be without something? So here he is telling, so the meaning of that nirvishesh is that the supreme lord is free from the modes of material nature, the characteristics of the modes. So like for example, Srila Prabhupada mentions there in the purport that if it is mentioned that he has no eyes and yet he can see everything. So which means that he does not have 
eyes like you and me, mundane eyes with limited vision. And sometimes we need glasses to acquire that vision. So it is not in the case of Supreme Lord. So Krishna has those eyes through which he can not only see you and me, he can see past, present and future. He is present in every corner of the universe and he is present in all the heart of all the living entities. And he can see. So it is not that he needs eyes like you and me to see others. He has transcendental eyes. Similarly, if it is mentioned that the Lord has no ears or the Lord has no hands or legs, yet he can hear everything and he can move wherever he wants because he is transcendentally complete. See, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, Whatever Vedic mantras describe the Absolute Truth impersonally only prove in the end that the Absolute Truth is a person. The Supreme Lord is understood in two features, impersonal and personal. If one considers the Supreme Personality of Godhead in both features, he can actually understand the Absolute Truth. He knows that the personal understanding is stronger because we see that everything is full of variety. No one can see anything that is not full of variety. So, one thing that we, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining to Sarvam Bhattacharya and to all of us as well, that uh, if there is a description in the Vedic literature that Lord is impersonal, so one, he explained the previous verse that impersonal means that he does not have anything material. So that is one thing that is explained and second is that uh, even if there is an impersonal section then we should continue studying that portion of the Vedic literature and we will come to a point that the Vedic lit literature itself confirms that yes, Supreme Lord is actually not an ordinary person but he is a supreme person. So his qualities, his uh, uh, his form, his activities, everything are spiritual, they are not material, they are not affected by Satvagun, Rajagun or Tamagun. And so that's why we, when we study Vedas, we have to be very careful and we have to study it completely. And we'll see in future verses that we should study it under the guidance of devotees. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is concluding here that Supreme Lord is understood in two features. There are impersonal aspect of the Lord, like we understand that the effulgence from the form of the Lord is impersonal. It does not have any discernible uh, difference, whereas uh, Lord also has a beautiful personal form. If we are studying Bhagavad Gita, we see that how after showing the universal form, Arjuna wanted to see the four-handed form and then the most beautiful two-handed form. The Lord has beautiful face, beautiful eyes beautiful hands, every aspect, inch of the bodies of the Lord is very, very beautiful. So, the Supreme Lord can be understood in two features, personal and impersonal. And if we understand both, then actually we have proper understanding of the Absolute Truth. And uh, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu concludes at the end of this particular verse that personal understanding is a superior understanding of the Lord because everything that we see has variety and all of this unlimited variety even that we experience in this material world originates from the infinite variety that exists in the Lord. <laughs> Everything in the cosmic manifestation emanates from the Absolute Truth, remains in the Absolute Truth and after annihilation again enters the Absolute Truth. So now here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is revealing the topmost philosophy for the benefit of Sarvabhama Bhattacharya and for all of us who have even slightest little faith in the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he is making a very important and significant point which we have already read in Bhagavad Gita. So in Bhagavad Gita, there is 
there are these four set of verses which we call chatur shloki verse chapter 10 verse 8 to 11 which is like the summary of the entire bhagavad gita the most important verses so out of that the verse number 10.8 krishna actually tells aham sarvasya prabhavo mattah sarvam pravartate i am the source of all spiritual and material world everything emanates from me so krishna is telling there that how he is the creator how he is the source of everything that exists so same thing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is quoting here and he is saying everything in the cosmic manifestation emanates from the absolute truth. Krishna also tells in Bhagavad Gita Maya Tatam Idam Sarvam Jagat Avyakta Murtina. He talks about that how in his unmanifested form the entire universe is pervaded. So unmanifested form means a form which we cannot see or perceive from our senses. Yet Krishna is supporting the entire universe and there Krishna gives the example of uh, a money or a pearl as how a thread is holding different pearls and it gives, gives the shape of a necklace. So how the necklace is supported by the thread. Similarly, Krishna is that invisible thread which is supporting the entire cosmic manifestation. So those verses from Bhagavad Gita and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is talking about that only where he is talking about how everything comes from the Supreme Lord, how everything is supported by the Supreme Lord and how at the time of destruction everything again enters into the Supreme Lord. The personal feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are characterized in three cases, namely ablative, instrumental and locative so uh, same thing what has been stated in the previous verse is uh, being stated here that as the supreme person so lord acts in ablative case in instrumental case and in locative case ablative case means that from the person from the lord the creation of the universe happens and then from the personal form of the lord the maintenance of the universe happens and from the personal form of the Lord, the annihilation of the universe happens. So, uh, so we see, we understand when we study uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, we understand that how from Mahavishnu or Karano Daksha Vishnu, we have the universe appearing from him. And then Lord glances on Prakriti and, you know, it agitates and it begins uh, the process of creation. And then Lord enters into each universe. You know, so the creation happens and then the Lord maintains it. And when the time of the universe annihilation comes, then all the material elements, they, you know, go back into the Lord. The Prakriti further goes back into the Lord. So that's how everything is originated from the Lord, maintained by the Lord and is annihilated by the Lord. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, When the Supreme Personality of Godhead wished to become many, he glanced over the material energy. So here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing about the creation as how creation happens. So when, Ch when the Supreme Lord wanted to expand, he wanted to become many. So then he actually looks at the material energy or glances at the material energy. Sikale nahi janme prakrat mano nayana Ata eva prakrat brahme nitra mana Before the creation, there were no mundane eyes or mind. Therefore, the transcendental nature of the absolute truth's mind and eyes is confirmed. So, if you look at the previous verse, here it is mentioned that uh, the Lord, uh, understanding that unfulfilled desires of the living entities he desires this creation and it's mentioned that he glances over the material energy so glance is connected with the eyes now we need to understand that material creation has not yet is not yet present and before the material nature material universe is created lord is glancing so which means that uh, there is no material eye, no material mind, because the material nature doesn't, uh, the manifestation of the universe doesn't, has not yet happened. So when it is described that Lord uh, 
thinks of expanding into many when he's glancing so the mind and the eyes are not material but they are actually transcendental in nature brahma shabd kare purna swayam bhagavan swayam bhagavan krishna shastre ra pramana so what is the praman or evidence in the shastras the word brahma indicates the complete supreme personality of godhead who is shri krishna that is the verdict of all vedic literature so here the meaning of this word brahma is given and it is said that wherever this word brahma is used actually it refers to the supreme personality of godhead and that is what the uh, the verdict of all vedic scriptures is so again going back to bhagavad gita so there is a verse which says vedesh cha sarvair aham eva vedyo the ultimate objective in all the vedic literature is to know krishna so this is from the 15th chapter where krishna emphasizes that how he is the source of remembrance forgetfulness and knowledge and then he says with all the vedic literature why are we studying the vedas so the purpose of studying the vedas is to understand krishna so i keep meeting people who tell me that they are like learning sanskrit they want to understand bhagavad gita and for that they are learning sanskrit so the essence of learning bhagavad gita and learning sanskrit and everything else should be to know krishna so if that is helping you in knowing krishna then it is successful otherwise it is uh, what is it yeah shrameva hi kevalam it is just a useless endeavor if we become a sanskrit pandita but if we do not accept krishna as a supreme lord then it is a wasteful endeavor so here chaitanya mahaprabhu is explaining that uh, the uh, brahman word is representing krishna and this is the verdict of all vedic literature so the third vedanta sutra is shastra yonitvat uh, so madhavacharya has uh, written a commentary on that and he is saying that the the rig the yajur sam atharva veda mahabharat panchratra and valmiki ramayan so all these are considered as vedic literature and any literature which preserves the essential meanings uh the essential principles of this are also considered vedic literature others which are not in line with these scriptures which i just mentioned they are simply misleading and uh, also so one we have to understand that what is vedic literature and second these vedic literature have to be read understood under the guidance of great acharyas um you, you know taking help from their commentaries and understanding the vedic literature with the help of their commentaries then only we can actually come to this uh, proper understanding that brahman indicates purna swayam bhagwan krishna vedera nibhudhartha bhujamana aya puran vakya se artha karaya nishaya the confidential meaning of the vedas is not easily understood by common men therefore that meaning is supplemented by the words of the puranas so now chaitanya mahaprabhu is telling that vedas is difficult to understand it is complex so for simple minded people for common men they may not be able to understand the meaning of the vedas so why is he telling this because sai baba patacharya was quoting vedanta sutra and he was giving that commentary so he is telling that not everybody can understand and that is why the puranas are there so it is basically to supplement the vedas but in a simpler manner so that others can also understand the meaning or the implication of the vedic knowledge and also many times the followers of shankaracharya they put lot of emphasis on shruti on the vedas but smriti they do not really uh, put much emphasis they do not really regard them as important but here chatra mahaprabhu saying i think if we are using the word shruti and smriti then shruti means shruti means the vedic literature the vedas uh, the upanishads and uh, the smriti is refers to the uh, you know body of knowledge like puranas so puranas are important that's what chatra mahaprabhu saying that because vedas are difficult to understand and therefore that knowledge has been further explained and the meaning is supplemented by the uh, puranas 
अहो भाग्यम अहो भाग्यम नंद गोपा व्रज उपसाम यन्मित्रम परमानंदम पूर्णम ब्रह्म सनातनम हाउ ग्रेटली फॉर्चुनेट आर नंद महाराज अहो भाग्यम अहो भाग्यम अहो भाग्यम अहो भाग्यम हाउ ग्रेटली फॉर्चुनेट आर नंद महाराज द काउहड मेन एंड ऑल द इनहेबिटेंट्स ऑफ व्रज भूमि देर इज नो लिमिट टू देयर फॉर्च्यून वाई बिकॉज द एब्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ द सोर्स ऑफ ट्रांस एंड डेंटल ब्लिस द इटरनल सुप्रीम ब्रमन हैज बिकम देयर फ्रेंड सो दिस वर्स इज कोटेड फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम फ्रॉम द टेंथ कैंटो स्पोकन बाय Lord Brahma, and he is saying, what is he saying? He is saying that this is so greatly fortunate for the people of Vraj Bhumi that they have Krishna, who is the absolute truth, in middle of them, in midst of them, as their friend. So the Supreme Lord has become their friend. So why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, quoting this verse is to explain that how the Poon Brahman. or the complete form of the lord is the personal form of the lord shri krishna who is present in uh, the uh, braj bhumi so the if you look at the last word last line of this verse purnam brahma so the complete brahman is supreme lord krishna so brahma ji is addressing here krishna as purnam brahma so that's why this particular Verse is so important, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quotes here because that's the confusion which is going on. Uh, this is this is something which the Sarvabhuma Vedacharya doesn't ex, doesn't understand. He is not regarding the personal form of the Lord. He is regarding the impersonal form of the Lord as the highest and as the absolute. But here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is quoting a verse from which it is very clear that the complete Brahman is Krishna, who is present in Vrindavan as friend of the Brajwasis. पानी पाशुति बजे प्राकृत पानी चरण पूर्ण कहे शीघ्र चले करे सर्व ग्रहण द वैदिक अपानी पाठ मंत्र रिजेक्ट्स मटेरियल हैंड्स एंड लेग्स एंड येट स्टेट्स दैट द लॉर्ड गोस वेरी फास्ट एंड एक्सेप्ट्स एवरीथिंग ऑफर्ड टू हिम सो नाउ वैदिक नॉलेज और ईशोपनिषद दैट वी स्टार्ट रीडिंग वी फाइंड सो मेनी कॉन्ट्रडिक्टरी थिंग्स लाइक इट इज सेड दैट द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड हैज नो हैंड्स और लेग्स and yet he goes very fast so how a person who has no legs can walk very fast so chaitanya mahaprabhu is explaining here that when we read such thing in the vedic literature we need to understand that the lord has no material hand or material leg but lord can of course go wherever he wants instantly he does not have to even think that he has to walk and reach any place he does not really need hands and legs to walk or to do things because he can do uh, i mean just by the thought just by his ichha shakti just by his desire everything gets manifested and fulfilled so he is now chaitanya mahaprabhu is what is happening here what discussion is going on here so because sarvabhama has talk, spoken so many verse verse after verse after verse for 7 days talking that the supreme lord is one who has no form who has no shape who has no quality who has no characteristic who has no desire so chaitanya mahaprabhu is explaining that that is an indirect or rather misrepresentation of the vedic knowledge and wherever such thing comes this is what it means that the lord has no material hand legs eyes etc थ्रोइंग अवे द डायरेक्ट मीनिंग इंटरप्रेट द एब्सल्यूट ट्रूथ एज इम्पर्सनल सो सो दीज वर्सेज विच एक्सप्लेन दैट द लॉर्ड डज नॉट हैव X Y Z, whatever it is mentioned, no hands, no legs. That is only to say that Lord does not have material hands or legs, but He has a transcendental, beautiful form. So what happens is when these uh, uh, verses, like the one we discussed, the verse of Brahma Ji, where He is saying absolute truth is as a friend of the Brajwasis. So they, my Vadis, they 
do not accept the direct meaning. When we read the verse, there is a direct meaning. So, the in Mayavadis, they just disregard the direct meaning and they try to twist the meaning, twist the interpretation and somehow give some impersonal explanation. Shad Aishwarya Pona Anand Vigraya Hara Hena Bhagya Vane Tumi Kaha Nirakara are you describing as formless that supreme personality of Godhead whose transcendental form is complete with six transcendental opulences? So there are six opulences which Krishna possesses, which we have already discussed at many occasions in our Bhagavad Gita courses. So there are six transcendental opulences which the Supreme Lord possesses. He's saying, you are considering that person to be formless who actually possess these six opulences. So if he is formless, how would he? become the possessor of these Ashwarya or opulences. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has three primary potencies. Are you trying to prove that he has no potencies? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is now going to quote from Vishnu Puran and he is going to explain the different potencies of the Lord. So, all along one thing which we can understand is that if we listen to a Mayavadi, he will try to convince us that Brahman impersonal form is supreme. But if we try to meet a Vaishnava, a devotee of the Lord, a follower in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or even Brahma, you know, Brahma ji is definitely a superior personality than uh, Adi Shankaracharya. So, if you if you see the line of the Vaishnava Acharyas or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, then from this line, it is very easy for us to understand that how Krishna mm -hmm. is the supreme, uh, the personal form of the Lord is supreme and not his impersonal feature. Impersonal feature is part of his personality. So, now let's look at the three potencies of the supreme Lord. Vishnu Shakti Para Prokta Shetra Gyakya Tatha Para Avidya Karma Samgyanya Tritiya Shakti Rishyate The internal potency of the Supreme Lord Vishnu is spiritual as verified by the Shastras. There is another spiritual potency known as Kshetra Gya or the living entity. The third potency which is known as Nishayans makes the living entity godless and fills him with brutal activity. So now here is a description of three potencies or three power or three energies of the Supreme Lord. So there are three energies. Again, the description is there in Bhagavad Gita. And here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is quoting from Vishnu Puran also. So various places we find this description. So the three potencies, one is internal. Internal is spiritual, completely spiritual. One is Nishayans or what we call Maya or Ignorance. So the whole material world is formed with that. That is the third one. And the middle one, Kshetra Gya or the living entity. So like all of us, we are the second type of energy of the Supreme Lord. So here we can see in this slide that the internal energy is represented by Srimati Radha Rani. And she is the spiritual potency of the Supreme Lord. Then there is external energy or Maya Devi represented by Durga Devi. She is also working under the Supreme Lord, under the instructions of the Supreme Lord. And the third one is the marginal potency. So as you can see there in the picture that there are different living entities. The spirit spark is the same which keeps changing bodies. So we all are that spiritual spark which keeps changing the body based on our desire and our activities, we get different forms, external form, but the spark remains the same. So that spark, the spiritual spark is actually marginal energy of the Supreme Lord, which is a living entity. So this marginal energy has the power to choose whether to work under the internal energy or under the control of external energy. So these are the three potencies of the Supreme Lord. So why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is quoting this verse is because if somebody has three types of energies, how can that person be impersonal? How can that person be formless? So the qualities or the energy belongs to a person. So that is why he is elaborating here. 
अवाप्नोति अत्र सनातना संततान ओ किंग द क्षेत्र की शक्ति इज द लिविंग एंटिटी ऑल्दो ही हैज द फैसिलिटी टू लिव इन आइदर द मटेरियल और स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड he suffers the threefold miseries of material existence because he is influenced by the avidya nisayans potency which covers his constitutional position so now after having explained the three potencies chaitanya mahaprabhu begins to describe the shetragya or the living entity the jiva or you and me not the body but the spirit spark the soul so that is what um Uh, is being this verse is being quoted by chaitanya mahaprabhu and what chaitanya mahaprabhu is showing through this verse he's he's explaining that the spirit spark the soul can either live under the control of the maya shakti or under the control of the superior spiritual energy so either under the um service of shrimati radharani or under the service of Maya Devi or Durga Devi. So choice is ours. So what happens is that we in this material world, we are serving Durga Devi, and she is inflicting threefold miseries on us. So when we look at the trident of the Durga Devi, trident means it has three spikes, and those three spikes represent the threefold miseries which are inflicted upon us. And this, these three miseries are inflicted. because we are influenced by avidya or ignorance we are not in knowledge of a real constitutional position that we are actually eternal servant of the servant of the servant of the supreme lord so this we are in this ignorance we don't have this knowledge and therefore we are in this material world serving durga devi you know being afflicted by her trident of threefold miseries the miseries coming from nature uh the miseries coming from other living entities and misery arising out of our own body tanya te rohitat vacha shakti hi shetragya sangita sarva bhuteshu bhupala tata naye navartate this living entity covered by the influence of nishayans exists in different forms in the material condition okay he is thus proportionately freed from the influence of material energy to a greater or lesser degree so again it is mentioned about the living entity or all of us and how we keep changing body and different body have different degree of influence of the material energy so like for example there are aquatics trees plants insects birds etc the spiritual consciousness is almost non existence in those species of lives then in the mediocre category is the human form of life where there is some spiritual consciousness compared to like a plant or a tree humans have more awakened spiritual consciousness and then when the uh, spiritual consciousness is completely awakened when a person becomes a devotee then that is the most superior form of human uh, superior life form so there are three categories and it keeps changing so not only three categories i mean it is like a gradation so to the degree we are under the mode of ignorance to that degree we are influenced by the material energy and to the degree we advance towards krishna to that degree we get protected by the spiritual energy ladini sandini stambhit tvai eka sarva samshaye alad tap kari mishra tvai no guna varjite the supreme personality of godhead is sat chit anand vigraha he is the form of sat chit and anand this means that he originally has three potencies the pleasure potency the potency of eternality and the potency of knowledge so that is sat chit anand so he is a personification of these three potencies together these are called the chit potency and they are represented in full in the supreme lord so these potencies are represented in full in the supreme lord for the living entity they, who are 
part and parcel of the Lord, the pleasure potency in the material world is sometimes displeasing and sometimes mixed. This is not the case with the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he is not under the influence of the material energy or its modes. So, Supreme Lord is not governed by the modes of material nature and for him, he is, uh, these potencies of pleasure, eternality and knowledge are unlimitedly present in him. But that is not, case, not the case with the individual infinitesimal living entity, the jivas. So, therefore, it's mentioned it for them, the pleasure in the material world sometimes is displeasing and sometimes may be mixed. Some mostly displeasing and some pleasing. That is what the case with the living entity, but that's not the case with Supreme Lord. So, these are the three potencies. Sandhini, which refers to the eternality. Haladini, which refers to the bliss. And some width, which refers to the knowledge potency of the Lord. So, in total, it is known as the Supreme Lord. As we would have heard this name, Sat Chidanand. So, Sat Chidanand means here it is Sat Chid and Anand. Eternality, knowledge and bliss. So, the combination of all these three and that is why Supreme Lord becomes Satchidanand. And we also add the word Vigra, Satchidanand Vigra, which means he has a personal form. So, this absolute truth is represented by a form which is made up of Sat, Chit and Anand or Eternality, Knowledge and Bliss. Satchidanand Maya. Sorry. Sachidanan Maya Haya Ishwara Sarupa Tina Amshe Chit Shakti Haya Tina Rupa The Supreme Personality of Godhead in His original form is full of eternality, knowledge and bliss. The spiritual potency in these three portions, Sachidanand, assume three different forms. The three portions of the spiritual potency are called Ladni, the bliss portion, Sandhini, the eternity portion and Samvit, the knowledge portion. We accept knowledge of these as full knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this is what we discussed in Sanskrit uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was quoting Vishnu Puran and now he is explaining. So he is giving an explanation to Sarvabhama Bhattacharya to make him understand that how the Supreme Personality of Godhead is actually the uh, the possessor of Ladini, Sandhini and Samvit Shaktis. And if one wants to acquire knowledge of the Supreme Lord, so then we must take shelter of the knowledge portion or Samvit Shakti of the Lord. The spiritual potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead also appears in three phases, internal, marginal and external. These are all engaged in his devotional service in love. So, uh, this is also uh, important that when the Lord bestows the potency of Haladini and Samvit or the pleasure potency in the knowledge, then actually the Jiva Shakti. So, Jiva Shakti as we discussed earlier, either would be under the control of the internal potency, Antaranga Shakti. The first one it's mentioned, Antaranga Chit Shakti, Tathashtra Jiva Shakti and Bahiranga Maya. So, these are the three um, you know, divisions or three phases of Lord's energy. So, Jiva Shakti can either take shelter of Antaranga or Bahiranga, Maya Shakti. In the material world, we are under the control of Bahiranga or Maya Shakti of the Lord. So, if we uh, take shelter, if the Lord bestows upon us Haladini and Samvit, which we saw in the previous verse, then we can actually escape from Maya, Bahiranga Shakti and go under the control of Antaranga Shichit Shakti of the Lord. Shadavida Aishwarya Prabhu Chit Shakti Vilasa Hena Shakti Nahi Mana Paramasahasa In his spiritual potency, the Lord enjoys six kinds of opulences. You do not accept the spiritual potency 
and this is due to your great impudence. So here we see that how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sort of explaining again and again so that it becomes clear to all of us for our benefit he is explaining and here in this verse he is talking about the spiritual potency. So the spiritual potency is uh, as we discussed, we have been discussing. So there are th three categories, internal, external and marginal. Internal is the pleasure potency which is also known as Chit Shakti. External is Maya and Bahiranga and uh, the living entity is the marginal or the Tatashtha Shakti. So three types of Shakti or potency of the Supreme Lord and if we do not accept that Lord is the possessor of spiritual potency then what happens is then we can't see any pastimes happening. Then the Lord possesses no qualities and then there are no pastimes. So if the God, if God is taken impersonal, devoid of potency, then actually it is completely against whatever the Vedic knowledge is telling us. Because we see that there are so many pastimes which Krishna performs. There are so many qualities which he possesses. So how can we completely say that he has no quality and no characteristics? So if Lord or a Brahman is taken to be without a personal form, then it is against the Vedic system of knowledge and it is against the Vedas. So actually one way if we see that the um, actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uses the word that you do not accept this spiritual potency and this is your great impudence which means you are not showing proper respect and which means that these impersonalists and Mayavadis they are actually impudent or they disrespect the Vedic knowledge and that's how they disrespect the Supreme Lord himself. Maya Disha Maya Vasha Ishwar Ji Beda Hena Jive Ishwar Saha Kahata Beda The Lord is the master of the potencies and the living entity is the servant of them. That is the difference between the Lord and the living entity. However, you declared that the Lord and the living entity are one and the same. So this is, you know, th that's how we understand that all the explanation for the seven days by Sar Bhama Bhattacharya was of this nature. He was equating the uh, important living entity with the potent Lord. He was equating them. Ishwar and Jiva. Ishwar and Jiva. The Supreme Lord and the living entity are same. This is what he was saying. So that's what Mahaprabhu is saying. You declare that Lord and living entities are one and the same? Actually that is incorrect. Lord is the master. Always. Always of all the potencies unlimitedly, infinitely and the living entity is insignificant servant of the Lord and of his potencies. So this difference between the living entity and the Supreme Lord remains eternally. It is not that at some point in time the living entity can become God. So Mayavadis, impersonalists, there are, you know, who believe in this, that I am a living entity, I am in ignorance, but I can become God. Some declare that I have become God and you can become God. So all that is being rubbished here by Lord Chaitanya. Gita Shastri Jeeva Rupa Shakti Kari Mane Hena Jeeva Bheda Kara Ishwere Rasane In the Bhagavad Gita, the living entity is established as the marginal potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yet, you say that the living entity is completely different from the Lord. So again, now he is giving reference. So he gave reference from Srimad Bhagavatam. He gave references from Vishnu Puran. And now he is talking about Bhagavad Gita. And he is telling that it is very clearly established in Bhagavad Gita. That living entity is what? Is tatast or marginal energy of the Supreme Lord. And now you are saying that the living entity is... Yet you say that the living entity is completely different from the Lord. So he is... Uh, he is correcting Sarva Bhama Bhattacharya's explanation. Bhumi rapo nalu vayu Kammano buddhire vacha Ahankara iti yamme Vinna prakrit rashtadha Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence and false ego are my eightfold separated energy. So in Bhagavad Gita, in 7th chapter, Krishna begins to explain his 
material energy in saying my eightfold separated material energy is composed of the uh, the Panch Mahabhut or the gross elements earth, water, fire, air, ether and the subtle elements that is the mind, intelligence and false ego. So if you see our body is made up of these eight elements. So this body is composed of these eight elements and all of these eight elements are Krishna's separated energy, material energy and therefore this body is made up of Lord's material energy. And then he talks about the superior spiritual energy of the spirit soul. Apriyam itasthvanya prakritim vidhime param jiva bhuta mahabhavo yayetam darayate jagat so here in this verse he is talking about Jeeva Bhutam or the living entity. So Krishna says, besides these inferior energies which are material, there is another energy, a spiritual energy and that is the living being, O mighty armed one. The entire material world is sustained by the living entities. So he is talking, so in the previous verse, so these are uh, I think verse number 4 and 5 from chapter 7 where Krishna first he describes his material energy and here he is talking about the marginal energy or the jiva. So he is telling that jiva is basically spiritual in nature and it is present in the material world. And it is an energy of the Lord. This is the it's point energy. being explained. So because Sarvamata Chaitanya is saying that Lord is separate, jiva is separate. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is quoting Bhagavad Gita and he is saying no, they are not separate. Jiva is an energy of the Supreme Lord. Ishwari Rashi Vigraha Satchidananda Kara Se Vigrahi Kaha Sattva Gunera Vikara The transcendental form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is complete in eternity, cognizance and bliss. However, you describe this transcendental form as a product of material goodness. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is just so... I mean, exposing all the faults and flaws of explanation of Sarbhama Bhattacharya is explaining anything that one Lord has a transcendental form, Ishwarera Shri Vigraha. It is a transcendental form of Sat Chidanand, complete eternality, cognizance, and bliss. But you say that it is Satvagun, it is made up of um, material guna or Satvagun, which means it's a product of material nature. Shivigrahi namane seita pashandi adrashya asprashya tei hayayama dandi. This is a warning and this is, this should be noted very carefully. Mahaprabhu is saying, one who does not accept the transcendental form of the Lord is certainly an agnostic. Such a person should be neither seen nor touched. Indeed, he is subject to be punished by Yamraj. So here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not talking about atheist. Whom is he talking about? He is talking about those people who do not accept that the Supreme Lord has a form. He is telling one who does not accept the transcendental form of the Lord. What should be done to him? He is subject to be punished by Yamaraj. So Sarvama Bhattacharya was describing that how Lord is impersonal and Mahaprabhu is telling that if this is how you believe, then you should be punished by Yamaraj. So this, here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is becoming very hard and uh, strong when he is talking about what would be the fate of impersonalist. What should happen to them? So he is saying that such a person should neither be seen nor touched. So this is how we must uh, distance ourselves and protect ourselves from the impersonalist. So impersonalist you may meet very often in our day to day life, you may meet people you feel oh he's a very religious and pious person and a little discussion with that person and you understand that he says that, that the Supreme Lord has no form, that the, that the form, the quality, everything of the Supreme Lord, it, it is just mythology, otherwise the Supreme Lord is just like that light, only the Jyoti and nothing beyond that. So all that is impersonalist verdict or that everything becomes void or shunya. So all that is like 
शून्यवादी और मायावादी एंड चैतन्य महाप्रभु इज सॉर्ट ऑफ कंटेमिंग दैट थॉट प्रोसेस एंड वी ऑल्सो सी दैट करेंटली ऑल मेजर रिलीजन दे डू नॉट एक्सेप्ट दी ट्रांसिडेंटल फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड दे डू नॉट वर्शिप द फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड ऑल्सो सो दे ऑल्सो कम इन दिस कैटेगरी मायावाद फिलोसफी आर सर्टेनली more dangerous than the buddhist so buddhists they do not accept veda so they are in a different category so but who are more dangerous than them are people who accept vedas who uh, you know know the vedic um, verses and yet they interpret the vedic verses explaining that lord has no form so yet preach agnosticism in according to my philosophy are more dangerous because they corrupt the vedic knowledge itself jeeve ran star lagi sutra kaila vyasa maya vadi bhashya shuni laya sarvanasha so again here there is a very very strict warning from chaitanya mahaprabhu he says maya vadi bhashya shunila शर्वनाश कंप्लीटली डिस्ट्रॉयड कंप्लीट डिस्ट्रक्शन एवरीथिंग इज स्पॉइल फॉर सच अ पर्सन सुशीला व्यास देव प्रेजेंटेड द वेदांत फिलोसफी फॉर द डिलीवरेंस ऑफ कंडीशन सोल्स बट इफ वन हियर्स द कॉमेंट्री ऑफ शंकराचार्य एवरीथिंग इज स्पॉइल्ड सो अ वेरी हैवी सेशन टुडे विद लॉट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन एंड लॉट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल्स so these are the uh, principles these are the philosophy philosophical foundation on which our spiritual life rests and it is very very important to understand because as sarvabhauma bhattacharya is hearing after hearing and understanding this he will become a wonderful devotee so similarly if we understand these principles and we apply these principles in our life then we become we advance a lot in our spiritual journey so we will stop here and we would like you all to go back open chaitanya charitamrit and read the purports of these verses because it's very important shila prabhupad has written elaborate purport for the entire section where he is defeating mayavadi philosophy so chaitanya mahaprabhu has given very briefly and we are trying to explain whatever limited we can but shila prabhupad has explained in detail so our humble request please do go through all these purports and we will continue in the next session from verse number 170 onwards and if we do this um, uh, study this section carefully one thing will happen we will become purified of these contaminations so if we have little bit of confusion uh, impersonalism in us or mayavadi influence over us if we read this section with faith then we will be free we will be purified of such contaminations so wishing you all the very best chaitanya charitamrit ki jai shri prabhu pad ki jai hari krishna hari krishna